Hello, Helen here. Welcome. Thank you for joining me today and spending a bit of time as I do another journal about my month in crafty adventures. I live in New Zealand in a, the top of the South Island in a place called Nelson and I live here with my husband Richard and our dog who's a red border collie, Bailey. So I've had a few crafty adventures this month. The first thing I wanted to tell people was some of the f my previous followers will know that I was expecting my first grandchild in March. Um, he was due the 4th of March and ended up coming eight days late on the 12th of March. So our wee grandson Riley James has been born. He's a sweet little fellow um, and we're really enjoying him. He um, seems to be very alert and very good at holding his head up and looking around and things so he's pretty amazing so uh, unfortunately I won't show any pictures of him because um, for privacy reasons I think it's up to his parents to be the ones that put any pictures or choose to do what they want to do on social media it's not up to me so um, just know that he's here and we're thoroughly enjoying him so that's why this podcast is a little bit my journal was a little bit late this month. Um, we've been helping out a little bit with grocery runs and extra clothing runs and all sorts of bits and pieces. So, um, yeah, we're thoroughly enjoying him. So I'll have um, a few little snippets of um, other things um, on my journal this month. Um, I think you've probably already seen a walk... Um, with Bailey um, that just showed how dry we are here. We've got very crispy dry um, in a, the top of the South Islands um, in a bit of a drought at the moment and they're not expecting good rain until um, mid to late April so we've got a little bit to go yet. Um, it's very very dry, things are all dying in the garden and um, we have had water restrictions um, at different times where we're not even allowed to water our vegetables and so it's been a little bit tough this summer but um, we're starting to get um, the trees turning and it's just starting to cool off in the mornings and nights now so autumn is coming so I think there'll be relief shortly. Um, so I'll get into the pod actual podcast part of the video um, right now and I've got a uh, two knitting finishes and some sewing and then I've got some works in progress quite a few works in progress and then I've got some purchases that I've made so let's get started the first thing is um, I was working on a pair of my f very first pair of socks um, in my last podcast and I finished them here they are so they've turned out really nice um, and they do fit quite nicely. I had concerns about whether they would fit or not, but they have. The pattern I used was the Arganantica. Um, it's by Laura McLean and I got it off of Ravelry. So I'll leave a link for that. So that's the pattern there. And I ended up making it a 2x2 two two rib the whole leg part is done two by two rib just so that I if I had gone to a too big a size it would sort of cinch it in and that's turned out to be what it's what has happened. Um, the wool is a wool by it was bought in a little Christchurch wool, uh, wool shop when we were down on holiday but it's by a company called Kiwi Yana whether you can see that um, and it was called surfing so I'm not sure where the, the title comes from because it certainly isn't blues and things like you'd expect the ocean to be but um, it must be some other sort of surfing but I really liked all the different colours of pink in it and so I'm really happy with those 
And then the other finish that I've got, sorry, I'm just picking up my glasses so I can read the pattern. Um, the last, the next one is a hat that I made. Um, I hadn't even started it last journal, but I've ended up finishing it. And it's this cable hat. Um, it is called the Staggered Cable Rabini by Ikeb Koboten. I'm not sure how to pronounce that. It's the, there, and that was on Ravelry as well, so I'll link that below in the description. And I used some wool that I got from a company here in New Zealand called Prosper. Prosper Yarns and it was a DK weight 100% merino called Sweet Little Lies and it's got little speckles and pinks and creams and things so it's quite cute and I ended up um, holding it double with a um, it's called an alpaca alpaca fibre and it's just a ball of floof that's lace weight. So I ended up just holding that just to sort of soften it and make it slightly more fluffy. And it certainly does. It's just beautiful and soft and fits really nicely. Um, I'm not sure about the pom-pom. I had a pink one and a white one and a mauve one. The pink one was too bright pink and the white one looks a little bit too stark too so I might change that and actually make a pom-pom out of the yarn yet but we'll see or I'll take the pom-pom off but I'm really happy with that and it was a really lovely knit to do the cables were fun to do weren't too complicated so yeah I'm really happy with that and that'll be great for dog walks um, in the winter so I'm really pleased with that so that's my two knitting makes um, and the other finishes that I did were I um, I'd made about four project bags for myself and I was always forever every time I wanted a new one I would have to take what was out of it um, and put you know the new project in and things so I decided I'd make some more project bags with some fabric and bits and pieces that I had so I've ended up making one two three four five five new ones so <laughs> I certainly got carried away so um, I'll show you them and then I have projects in them that are works in progress I'll show you them a bit later so the first one is this lovely um, butterfly fabric with a pinstripe pink bottom to it. It's a zip bag um, and then it's got inside it I've just put pink check fabric. Zip at the top and then I've ended up it's um, also having a go at making some charms that I can just hang on the side of my bag. So there's some beads, there's a little padlock, there's a little um, leathery tassel so I'll also put some pictures of the ones I made at the end of the video as well. But I made that one there to go on that. And then I made another one which I quilted with another fabric that I had. And it's got a little ditzy daisy sort of pattern. Also got a charm on it. And then inside that one. Oops. This looks a bit stuck. I've got a kind of rose and cream sort of um, muslin type fabric inside that for its lining and then I also did a blue version with also got a blue charm and then a pretty fabric with a blue and white spotted belt bottom and in that I bought a couple of fat quarters that were just this lovely florally sort of fabric. So that's that there. I think I'm getting a bit better with my making. The 
the sides seem to match a little bit on some of them some of them not so much but um, yeah I'm getting there and then the last two I made were um, a couple of patchwork ones so I made a really big one so I could put a blanket in if I wanted to, or the starts of a blanket if I wanted to so it's just um, different yellow florals that I got from a jelly roll that I'd bought and then a fabric at the bottom there and a handle made out of the same fabric again a zip one and then I've just got another ditzy yellow floral inside it for, for that so that one it looks like I did pretty well with the, the matching of the seams and things at the side that one and that one so getting better and then I made a little small one because I wanted an, a smaller one for socks when I'm doing them so um, I made a little patchwork blue one both same fabrics but just maybe in a slightly different order front and back and then the same leftovers of the floral that I had in the other blue one for the lining and this one's just got a plain blue lining in it and then the spotty top and it's a drawstring so that's all the sewing projects I did I was actually felt like I was missing the sewing I've only just got back into it and I I have been really enjoying it so I decided I'd over a series of a few weeks just put some more together and now I've got plenty of project bags to to hold my projects so that's all the the finishes that I've done this this month um, and we'll get on to some of the projects that I've been working on. I have um, had a bit of a session with making socks and I've cast on something new, a shawl and I've also been working on the, um, the poncho that I showed you last week, last month. So I'll show you that first. So it's a lacy poncho that will just do for in, in between seasons um, it's made with a cake that I bought on Etsy and it's by My Melody made in Switzerland and it's called Winter Twilights and I've only got the two colours left in it pink and a mauvey colour but um, it started off in a grey grey and it's gone to a blue and then it's just starting into the mauve now I don't have too much further to go um, I actually did this podcast yesterday morning did the whole podcast downloaded it which took ages onto my computer ready to start making the editing the podcast and video and discovered that I'd actually had no sound I'd, I'd turn my microphone off rather than on so this is a remake <laughs> um, and yesterday I showed you that I'd done from this this marker here is it here to here is how much I'd done and then yesterday I got that little bit more there done so um, I'm getting into it and I'd really like it to be finished fairly soon because I th with the cooler mornings and afternoons I th think it would be nice to actually start wearing it. The pattern is um, from the YouTube channel Bag O' Day, um, Crystal's pattern and it's her pattern that's called poncho with sleeves but I'm not going to do the sleeves I'm just going to have the poncho only so um, it just needs to be a little bit longer and then it'll be wearable I think so I plan to keep working on that I'll tell you about a plan I've got to start making some progress in, a bit later um, so that's my one of my projects um, let's talk about socks I think so one of the 
one of the wools that I showed last time I started my my sock and I'd got a pattern from the website um, it's by Melinda Mesor and she has a whole lot of patterns this one here is called back to basic sock short row heel cuff down um, and so I started that and her sizing it's a free pattern so I can talk about it her sizing said to measure the ball of your foot and then choose a size that will give you a 1 to 1.5 inch or 2.5 to 4 centimetre negative ease and somehow in my head I thought 1.5 negative ease but I converted it to centimetres rather than inches so I ended up only taking 1.5 centimetres negative ease off the size so I was doing size 1, 2, 3, 4, five, size 5 and I started off by doing the cuffs I'll talk, talk about the um, yarn in a minute T did the cuffs, did down to the where I start the heel and then I did the same for the second sock and then because it was a new style of heel that I'd never done before I decided I would do one heel and then do the other heel which I did and then once I finished the second sock I started knitting down to the foot and when I got to the size of the toe I tried it on and it's huge on my foot it's a baggy baggy horrible and I'd actually, you know, got to the heel part, this part, up on both. And it's turned out to be way too big. It's like, well, it's my own mistake and I'm totally frustrated with myself. So I'm going to have to frog it back. I've already frogged the, the other one back, um, as you can see. <laughs> So I'm going to have to frog this one back but I wanted to show it first. Um, I'm doing Magic Loop. The yarn is another yarn that I bought at the same time I bought this yarn and it's called, um, what's it called? Soulmate. Although some of the Soulmate that you see online have got a lot more purple and orange and less cream but the one I ended up buying from the shop was, it was a paler one and it's really pretty. So, yes, that's going to be frogged back and started again. And um, But I am quite pleased with how I managed to do the heel. I'm quite happy with that. So that, that'll be more practice for doing that kind of heel. So, yes, that's a bit of a dud. And I'll get back to that. The, so when I discovered that I'd done that and I was feeling very frustrated with myself I decided I had an appointment in Nelson and I decided while I was in town I would go to the um, only main dedicated wool sh yarn shop that we've got in Nelson and that was a, a shop called Cruella's and the lady in there um, really great she's got a wealth of knowledge she has amazing yarn the shop's absolutely packed full you can barely move around in it it's that packed of wool um, and I had seen on her website that they had the self-striping um, sock yarn and I and I've seen it on lots of videos and I think it's quite cool how it works out with the, the way the stripes work out so I decided right I'll go in there and I'll buy some sock yarn. So I got talking to her um, when I went up to, to purchase it. I picked this one here which is a Cruci, Cruci sock yarn four ply and it is merino, 75% merino superwash and 25% nylon. So I really like, thought that that colour was really pretty so happily went up to buy that and was talking to her about making socks and how I'd done the wrong size and um, 
I was going to have another go at doing socks and she ended up giving me this pattern. Now it's only got Nelson email address and a postal address for this pattern so, and I've tried looking for it online and unfortunately um, I can't see it online anywhere and I've even looked up it's called by Karen E Designs and I've tried looking that up and can't find it anywhere so I'm sorry I can't give you that pattern but it's just a vanilla sock pattern called Boomerang Socks but she gave it to me for free and said that the pattern was very good um, it had magic loop or oh yeah, just magic loop I think and it had a toe up version and a top down version and she suggested I start with the toe up version so that I could measure the width and the length as I went and adjust if I needed to and before I'd got too far into the sock and then discovered it was too big so um, that was really great advice and it, it's worked beautifully um, so I've done done my first sock and I've started my second one so this is my first sock I haven't blocked it or anything yet but it's turned out really cute with the design with the wool um, it looks very long in the foot but when you have it on it stretches a bit and it actually shortens that it fits perfectly the heels turned out really cute the way it's two-tone with the way the wool worked out I'm quite happy with the, the heel and then I've just done quite a short leg because I don't really like my socks too long I prefer them just to be sort of just above the ankle so um, that suits me really fine so I've done my first one and I'm um, finished the toe shaping of the second one and now I've just got to knit up the foot so I'll finish that hopefully by the next podcast and I'll have my, another pair of lovely socks and then I may even use that pattern for this for this other one um, and do a, the pair with that and what I think I'm going to do is do a, just a contrast even though it looks nice all in one I'm going to do a contrast of um, the the cuff, the toe and the heel um, in a different colour and I'll show you that a bit later what I've ended up buying for that so that's my second pair of socks on the go so that's that one, that one, that one and another start um, because I'm doing all these sock sock um, wool yarns I'm sort of getting little leftover bits from when I'm making a pair of socks in four ply I decided I might start making a blanket and I'd seen quite a few YouTube videos on the mitered square blankets so I've made a start on it this is going to be a really long term project um, but I like the look of them I like that it's kind of like almost like a memory blanket where it's got different colours that are you know pairs of socks or a shawl or whatever so this is how it's looking so far and I've got another and I've just got to fill in three more squares there um, so I'm, I decided to do it checked with cream just so that the variegation could stand out now I love variegated yarn and I think they're fine in smaller things like hats and socks and mitts and things like that but it's not something I would knit a whole garment in um, with the variegated or indie dyed yarns because I just think they, they're just too much so um, I thought this was a really neat way of using some of them um, and I'm really enjoying the variegation and the so yes I'm really happy with that I've put it put it away at the moment because um, I'm I've used all the colors I had and I'm just going to wait until I've got a few more leftover bits but that's from a shawl that I made that is from the, the socks that I've just finished 
um, and then I just bought a, a skein of this darker rainbow and this lighter rainbow um, because I just really like the rainbows and I can't imagine making a garment in those so I have bought um, some fit, some different wools um, from a couple of shops well yarn sort of craft shops just to supplement the ones that I had already so I've bought two of these natural loyal print 100% wool variegated yarn so there's that one and the blue one there so they've gone into the blanket um, I've bought this one here which is the same but it's baby yarn and I started from the middle and you think it would be mainly yellow and grey but it turned out when I knitted it that it's apricot and grey which turned out to be interesting so I think the next time I use this I'll use it from the outside and hopefully it'll turn out yellow and grey and it'll look like a completely different colour and then I bought this other one which is Four Seasons Pure Wool 8 ply and it's a pink and purple one so they've kind of got me going um, and then I'll just work on it bit by bit as I you know have some leftovers left um, and I bought um, this Gritland Craft Grasslands yarn 8 ply and it's just a, what do they call the colour? Winter white. So that's the, the yarn I'm using for the, the other, the alternative, the natural colour one, part of it. So that's going to be a really lovely project and I can imagine it being really warm when it, we come to, to finally finish it and use it. So I'm really enjoying making that. Um, the mitre squares don't take very long, I can get two or three done a night so it feels like you're making real progress so it's just great. And the last project, pro project I've started was, or the last new project I started, was I bought this yarn. I was looking, watching a YouTube video of um, Little Drops of Wonder or my my Wonderful Life with Ellie um, in the UK and she was going to a wool festival and um, had made a scarf and wanted to, to wear it and it was a, she had greens and golds and things in hers and it looked like a really lovely scarf that wasn't too bulky and was just really good to wrap around your neck um, and I thought well that would be really really good so I ended up going and purchasing the pattern it's called the Moonlit Shawl by Sandra Paul from Cherry Heart and she was one of the first podcasters I started watching. I love her podcast. So yes so. that's her shawl. So it's a very simple shawl and then it's got a sort of a very long thin crescent shaped shawl with then a lacy edging. So I started, I bought some yarn, went online and bought some yarn for that and it arrived and I th it was absolutely beautiful. I'll show a little video after this podcast of me unwrapping the, the yarn and then caking it up. Um, but it's this really beautiful, really pretty coloured yarn called... Um, peach fuzz and it's done on I think it's called a twinkle toes um, base which is 100% merino and it's got a lovely gold stellina in it so I don't know whether you can pick up the, the shine there it's just really beautiful and I thought this would be really lovely as a colour to wear if I'm wearing a black top to work and it was just wrapped around my neck just to add a little bit of colour so I've done the shawl part 
that's been a bit of a saga and I'll tell you about that in a second. So it's just this really long, it's quite hard to show you, but this really long, thin, and it's just done in um, the same stitches all the way through, but you go across and you go back. So it makes this kind of like a zigzaggy pattern. I don't know whether you can see that. But just really lovely, really simple to do. <laughs> so it's so it says I, who I did it up to the first. Started making it, did it up to the first section of increases, and you're supposed to have I, I won't say, but so many stitches, and I didn't have enough, and I thought, oh, well, I've done something wrong there. So, and it was going to be that I had to do it about another ten rows or something to make the the amount of stitches I needed. So I thought, no, that's not right. So I pulled it back, and I worked out that. I hadn't been, when you went back you had to pick up the stitch that was the chain three on the row before. So I worked out, okay, so I unpicked it and did that part again and I ended up with too many this time and I thought well something's not right there and I, I was also struggling with like it's supposed to be straightish on one side and then the curve on the other side and I was getting mixed up between wrongs and right sides and I definitely had a few issues with it so I frogged it back again and started again and what I ended up doing was I had this little notepad thingy and I just wrote down just down what row it was and how many stitches I needed at the end of each row. And I also put a little I, I put a little asterisk at where certain parts parts were supposed to happen. I won't go into the details because it's a paid pattern, but um, that was much better because I could keep track of my right and wrong sides and also how many stitches I needed and to make sure that I had that at the end of the row. So I ended up managing to get past the stage where I unpicked it twice, got through, went right through um, and got to the end and I'm really really pleased with that. So then I needed to, to pick up or do um, a seven row lace edging on it. So I started it um, and I got up to row three took me a while to get you know right across got to row three quite late one one night the next morning just before I well it was yesterday morning so just before I did the podcast I was looking at it and thinking hmm, I wonder whether I was looking at the pattern ready to do the next row and I'd stupidly printed out when I printed out the pattern, I printed out is it the US version rather than the UK version, which which is the one that's got the treble, which is a double. So anyway, I'd printed out the wrong one. I thought, no, oh, no, I can convert that. So every time it said treble, I knew I was doing a double. But then the pattern actually said that you needed to double crochets and treble crochets on different parts of the pattern. And I'd just been doing, somehow in my head, I'd just done double as I know them, double for UK. But then I did treble when it said a treble. So in actual fact, I was doing the same stitch for both. Instead of what I should have been doing, which was a single and a double. So anyway, I thought, no, that's going to be way too holy and way too low, lacy. So I unpicked it right back to how it is now. And I sat down just before I did my podcast yesterday and did the first two rows. And was happily going along and I was actually doing, you know, single crochets and double crochets where I needed to. And looked at it and I don't know whether you noticed but I had a stitch, count, stitch marker on the front showing what the front was. And I'd actually picked up and... Instead of doing the extra curvy part of it, 
I was doing the little edging right down the straight part on the wrong side. So this has been so fraught and I don't know where my head is, I don't know why I keep making mistakes with this because it really is an easy pattern and I don't know why I'm making it so hard for myself but anyway I unpicked it again, I'm putting it away until next week because what my plan is to kind of make some more progress on some of these projects, especially my poncho and the pair of socks, is that I'm going to, I've picked three, three of my whips and I'm going to do a rotation through the week where I do two nights, if I get to have two nights, two nights of doing my socks two nights of doing the shawl and then Friday, Saturday and Sunday I'll work on my um, poncho and because it's Easter this coming weekend I'll have a few more, hopefully a little bit more time to craft so um, what I'll do is I'll do the bulk work on that and then next week I'll come back to my sock and my shawl and do the same sort of rotation next week until I get them all finished so that's going to go away until mid next week and hopefully when I pick it up I'll be in a better headspace and I'll progress much much better with it and get it finished because literally there's only seven rows to go and it's finished and I'm looking forward to wearing it um, such a pretty colour um, the, where, where I ended up getting the wool from was a place called um, I think it was called Roxy Fibres um, I'll show it in the video she gave me a little card that had a little um, stitch marker on it um, it was called Peach Fuzz and apparently it's um, the Panatone colour of 2024 is Peach Fuzz so I have been seeing it in all sorts of different yarn selections and things and thought well, right, I'm going to knit something with it just or crochet something with it just so that I've got something because I really love the colour peach so yes that's that's that one and then the last whip I've been working on which was a whip that's been going for quite a long time um, I think I showed it on my very first journal um, entry and it's a sampler blanket that I'm making it's all in greys and blacks and various different tones and a cream um, it's I started it it's on Tiffany crochet with Tiffany's um, make along and she had she called it a temperature sampler blanket I'm not doing the temperature part because I really did want to just pick all sorts of different greys um, because it's eventually going to go on my lounge over on my other couch um, we've got a throw there that's looking very pulled and very sort of bobbly and quite sad looking so eventually it's going to go there but um, I had got to here previously so I've only just done that much more but I thought I would just check in and show you that I have actually been working on it um, I've done six or eight rows of moss stitch and then I've done a basket weave stitch so um, they've come out very different tension which I've talked about this before with I'm doing it in bulky weight wool and some of the wools even though they say 12 ply can vary hugely like some of them are really thick some of them are really thin so some of them I've had to double up and do two threads together like these ones I had to because they were quite thin this one's really chunky um, this one turned out to be quite thin and it's also quite a tight stitch so I'm hoping it will block out when I come to block the the blanket once it's done but I'm not too worried anyway it's it's just what it is a sampler blanket and I'm just trying out all these new stitches and kind of just making it varied in colour and stitch 
so that's going to be a long term project too and it's going to take quite a while because it needs to be fairly big so that's all my um, works in progress at the moment um, I had have been doing had been doing a granny square baby blanket but I'm not going to show you that because I haven't done any anything more on that one so the last thing I've got to show you is some purchases that I've made of yarn um, and I'll just show you those purchases were um, I was looking up we have a a platform called Trade Me, which is a bit like eBay on you know in some other countries, and it started off as being like a second hand selling second hand things that you have, but it's ended up the platform for um, you know small companies and artisans and things to, to, to sell their products on and I was looking up, um, we were about to, to put a new uh, greenhouse in, in our backyard, I bought it for my husband's 60th birthday because we're getting older and it's getting harder and harder to you know do gardening down low and I thought it'd be really nice for him to pot around in it and grow things from seeds and things so I was looking up seeds and um, heirloom tomatoes plants and various different heirloom flowers and things like that I'd seen some really pretty asters and ended up having them in my cart and I looked at all the ladies um, it was a lady called Babes I think B-A-B-E-Z um, and saw that she also had indie dyed yarn and she obviously just does it as a hobby um, she produces some really lovely ones, um, but it was actually $22 a hank, which is really reasonable here. Um, most of the 100 gram hanks um, here in New Zealand are about $35 to $38 a hank, um, and they can be anything up to about $47. Even, I've even seen them $52. So they're not cheap to buy here. Um, it's actually... A very expensive hobby knitting and crocheting and most wools in our wool shops are about 11 to 14 dollars a skein and that can be just a 50 gram skein so you know if you're you're looking at 100 to 200 dollars for a garment depending on what it is so it's just gotten ridiculous especially when merino wool was growing here in New Zealand it's just ridiculous but anyway um, it's why I'm only making smallish projects like socks and gloves and hats and things because I can't afford to make a full garment. Um, so anyway, yes, this I bought from her. It's a DK 100%, oh no, it's a merino nylon mix, 405 metres. It's called Burgundy Delight, so I thought that was really pretty. And I bought this other one that she'd already skeined up, which is very helpful. I've got a, a ball, a cake winder, but I don't have a swift to, you know, um, wind the wool from the hanks, so I end up just using a back of two chairs. And um, so it's really helpful that it came um, already caked up and it's a hundred percent merino wool called opal and it's really really pretty it's got sort of blues and greens and a pink and a mauve and just really really beautiful pastel colors so it's, it's an eight ply so I'm going to make a probably another nice woolly hat out of that I thought I'd do a two by two rib or something like that so I bought that with a purpose this I didn't have a purpose for I just thought it was just beautiful so bought that and then when I was looking for the the peach fuzz um, yarn for my um, shawl I ended up finding some other indie dyers as well and what I ended up buying another hank from a company called she's online 
Miss Maud NZ um, and it looks like it's a little sewing shop that's got yarn and patterns and things as well in Greytown which is in a little a lovely little town um, just above Wellington so the yarn I bought for that was um, this colour here really pretty light mauve colour and it's called Valentina is the name of it there so it's a another sock yarn 75% um, merino superwash 25% nylon but I'm not sure what I'm going to make with that it was going to be a toss up between this or the peach fuzz that I make my shawl with and I've ended up going with the peach so this is now surplus but I'm sure I'll find something beautiful to to use it for and I thought what I might do is hold it with a um, lace weight of alpaca or bow hair just to make it slightly fluffier and softer looking even though it is lovely and soft still anyway and then um, when I was purchasing my um, self-striping um, sock yarn from Cruella's, the, the yarn shop in town, um, I was looking at all her hanks that she had of indie dyed yarn and she's got this one called Spritzer um, brand, um, four ply, it looks like it's a sock four ply sock yarn um, and they were only $28 and I bought this beautiful teal and blue so this really pretty teal some sort of quite royal blues and then a sort of prettier lighter so turquoisey blue so I bought so many just pastel colours lately that I thought I'd buy something that was really rich and strong in colour so that's just absolutely beautiful and then I also bought from this, it's a 100% pure merino super twist I think. It's called Plum Scope and it's beautiful. It, sh it comes up looking a bit more red but it's more plummy in real life. It's really beautiful. It's got light and dark tones, it's more of a tonal. So really beautiful, so I'm really happy with those two. And then my last purchase was from an online store because my, my sock I wanted to try doing a contrast and just to make them a little bit different and that was the colour. I ended up buying the set of little minis, 20 gram minis because I saw the purple in there and I thought that would go really nicely with the purple that's in the sock and I'll do my toes, heels and cuffs with with that and then it also had some other really beautiful colours like it's got a lovely um, mauve that's got pinks and things in it it's got another little peachy one and a really hot pink and a softer pink so I'm sure they'll come in really handy I've never had any minis before so it'll be quite good to have as a standby for doing um, contrast colours and something that I might not like stripes or something so really happy with that and that came from a lady called Purple Flamingo Fiber Arts um, on her she ended up giving me one of her cards her name is Roxanne don't really even see that she gave me a couple sent me a couple of stickers which was really lovely some mushrooms and a lovely little black and white with Thrive written on it. Um, so the, the collection that's the mini collection is called Dopamine Inducing Mini Set. She's got some quite interesting names and she's based in Blenheim which is another town um, just at the very top of um, the South Island as well just across the country from us and they're where you get the ferry to go over to Wellington from so or Picton is part of Blenheim and yeah so they they're not too far away and actually arrived just in a couple of days which was great so nice and quick 
so that's all my purchases so thank you for joining me um, thank you if you stayed all that time and hung around with me um, I've definitely got a few things on and I'm hopefully we'll have a few more things finished in time for next um, next month's podcast and journal which uh, hopefully will be more mid-month next next time because we won't have the the newness of having the baby arrive and spending a bit more time with them and and enjoying him so um, well I still will enjoy him and <laughs> spend as much time with him as possible but um, his parents are doing very well for, for new parents they're, it's such a daunting task a newborn they're such hungry little creatures and um, sleeps all the time and then it feeds all the time so yeah hard work but he's just lovely um, so yeah I'll see you next month um, hopefully I'll have a few more things I may even have another a new thing on the on the go um, I'll leave you looking at I'll show you some video of me opening the the yarn the peach fuzz yarn caking it up um, and I've also got a little bit of footage of making some fudge brownie for taking up to to help out with you know like a treat when we went and took up tea the other night so I'll show that um, and then we'll see you next time so see you in April. <laughs>